the first thing that we want to to talk about is vector bundles that many of you will have heard about, but I want to re recall some main properties of vector bundles that will be used when considering augmented bundles or decorated bundles, such as Higgs bundles. So how many of you have worked with Higgs bundles before, with vector bundles before? With vector bundles? So you probably know what degree and rank are, and the main thing that we're going to be looking at is at the stability conditions that we want to um, to use for Higgs bundles. So an introduction to the properties that we want for vector bundles, given a vector bundle. And I should mention, actually, uh, I should mention where we're going to be working. We're going to be working on a Riemann surface. So I'm going to call sigma a compact Riemann surface. of genus G bigger or equal than two. You can put lower genus and you can put mark points on the Riemann surface. Maybe we'll get to that point, to that part where we define parabolic structure on those mark points. But for now, let's just stick with genus at least two. So a vector bundle on sigma has a slope. And the slope is the following, has slope, slope equal to slope of E, uh, so a vector bundle E here, slope of E is the degree of E over the rank of E. So if you haven't seen degrees and ranks before, uh, what we're going to do in these lectures is something that uh, can be do locally. And locally, you can think of the rank as the dimension of your fibers over each point of the Riemann surface. You have a fiber, which is a vector space. It has a dimension, that's the rank. And the degree will be the number of zeros that a holomorphic section of the bundle has. So if I think of E, over sigma, the section will be a map from sigma to E that will have zeros sometimes, and the number of zeros will be my degree. So this is a slope, and we're going to say that a vector bundle is stable or semi-stable depending on the slope of the sub-bundles. So we say, and you should tell me if the handwriting is too small, um, just shout and I'll make it big. Um, so say we say that E is stable, or equivalently semi-stable if for every sub-bundle that it has, so for every F inside E sub-bundle, the slope of F is less than the slope of E. So the mu, I'm going to call this for uh, making it concise, the mu of E, the slope of E, so mu of F, is less than mu of E. And for semi-stability, we want less or equal. So this is a stability condition that we need to put in order to uh, construct the modelized space of vector bundles. And what we can do once we have this stability or semi-stability condition is we can look at isomorphism classes of vector bundles with fixed rank and degree. And that's what we usually call N, so N, and we can put here the rank, so say rank R and degree D, the modelized space of rank R and degree D vector bundles. So we need the stability condition, so of isomorphism classes, of semi-stable bundles. Yes. Yes, yes. I mentioned the sections have to be holomorphic. Um, so let me just put here holomorphic. Um, so let's put it here, and I guess I put here is more of holomorphic. And this is why I was telling you to think about the degree as the number of zeros of holomorphic sections uh, that the bundle has. Thank you. 
Um, so we can look at this modelized space and we can ask what are the properties of this modelized space. Um, and we can ask how its tangent space and cotangent space relate to Higgs bundles. And make sure that I have everything I want to say. Um, so one of the things to uh, make sure we remember, we, because it's going to affect the model space of Higgs bundles, is when is it smooth? Uh, when, so remark, uh, when D and R are co-prime, so for D, R, co-prime, then the model space is smooth. It's a smooth space. And the dimension, so n square g minus 1 plus 1. I want to look at this moduli space, but I w not just the moduli space, but its cotangent space. So I want to consider its cotangent its cotangent space. We're approaching Higgs bundles from a different perspective than what uh, those of you at Richard's talk uh, read, uh, which is from the perspective of the self-duality equations, just that so you have a new direction to see them, and it's kind of a complementary direction to those appearing in the notes. So just so you don't get bored seeing the notes and seeing this, I want you to see that Higgs bundles can appear from many different ways. Uh, what, sorry? N. N. The, sorry, the rank. Yeah. No, it's R. It's R. Uh, thank you. I'm going to go, the rank is going to be R when I remember, and otherwise it's going to be N. Um, so, um, yes, thank you. Let's try to make sure that I, yeah, and G is the genus, so that bit is fine. Uh, here I hadn't mentioned uh, the rank. This is what we're going to usually call R, and this is what we usually call D. Okay, so what's the cotangent space? I need to get a representative of a point. So this is isomorphism classes of vector bundles uh, in the moduli space. So we take, take a representative of an isomorphism class. Take V, a representative of a class. And so I want to look at the cotangent space at the representative of this model space. Let me drop the N and D, uh, the, sorry, the R and D. Uh, so let's just call it N for now, since it's clear that we are fixing rank and degree. So what is this space? We can write it down, actually, in terms of endomorphisms of B. So we can write it down as H1 of over the Riemann surface of N traceless endomorphisms of B. This is, um, you can think of them as the first cohomology, just like you see there, of endomorphisms of B over the Riemann surface. But now we want to use a duality to understand it as terms of sections, so H is zero. So we can use third duality to make it isomorphic to H zero, and using third duality, um, We put this, the zero here, and we look, what are we looking at? Um, we're adding k, we're adding the cotangent space of the Riemann surface, so cotangent space of the Riemann surface, and we're tensoring by n b. And are we, um, Remember to put the dual here, and I'm going to give a name to this space because we're going to come back a lot. So I'm going to get K. This is the cotangent space of the Riemann surface. It's also called the canonical bundle. Of the Riemann surface. So the canonical bundle, when considered all of a Riemann surface, is a line bundle. Um, so this is, if you haven't seen this object before, it's a line bundle. Sorry, this is probably too small. Line, bundle, of degree, 2G minus 2. 
So these are the properties we're going to use of the canonical bundle. Um, okay. Yes, thank you. And so I want to consider what this object is uh, in terms of now sections. So these are sections over the Riemann surface of all of these. So this is a line bundle tensored with the endomorphisms of B dual. How can I think of that? Remembering that the endomorphisms of B can be thought as the product of bundles, uh, this is the same as taking sections sections that are on sigma, which are traceless, which are traceless, and go from V to V tensored with K. So uh, from V to V tensored with K. So here we have K, and this endomorphism dual, we're thinking it as maps uh, from V to V. Um, so these are maps, uh, we can put them in name. These are holomorphic maps <coughs> on the Riemann surface. There are sections on the Riemann surface that can be thought as traceless maps between vector bundles, and this takes us to Higgs bundles. So let me now tell you what Higgs bundle is. For those that haven't seen them before, a Higgs bundle A Higgs bundle, E phi, <coughs> on sigma is a pair where E is a holomorphic vector bundle, is a holomorphic vector bundle. This is on the Riemann surface. And phi is a map just like those that we have here. So it's a map from E to E tensored with K holomorphic. <coughs> we mentioned that K is a line bundle and has degree 2G minus 2. If you've worked with line bundles before, you know we can take the square root of even degree uh, bundles, line bundles in particular. So let's take the square root of K to construct a classical example uh, of Higgs bundles. So you can see what we're talking about. So what's the example that we want to look at here? We want to consider E, the sum of a square root, k to the half plus the dual of the square root, so minus one half. So for this, we fix a choice of k to the half. There's two to the two g choices of k to the half. We just fix one, and then we let the vector bundle be that. Now our Higgs field, we're going to be doing a lot of linear algebra this week because, as you can see, we're talking about vector bundles which locally are, ve are vector spaces and maps between them will be locally matrices. So the Higgs field goes from E to E tensor with K, so K to the half plus K to the minus a half to K to the half plus K to the minus a half tensored with K, so it's a, this is a line bundle, and a line bundle is a rank two bundle, so our Higgs field will be a, a two by two matrix. And the way that I want to do it, I want to have a two by two matrix, which is of diagonal, and let's think about the entries, and what are the entries here? So this matrix, when applied to this pair, is going to go from K to the minus a half, to K to the half, to K, and so I'm going to put an omega here, and if we think, just like we were doing here, alternating between vector bundles as, uh, and sections of bundles and maps between bundles, a map which is from k to the half to k, k to the minus a half to a half to k can be thought as a map omega, which is a section on the Riemann surface, and what we do, just like we did in that side, we put this one, this degree, in the opposite sign, 
and we sum them to those ones. So k to the one half plus one half plus one, that's two. So it's really a quadratic differential. So Now we can look at the same thing for the other entry. This entry goes from k to the half to k to the minus a half to k. So they cancel out, and it's going to be just the identity on k. So the identity. So what we have here is a family of Higgs bundles parameterized by quadratic differentials. So family, family of rank two Higgs bundles rank two Higgs bundles parameterized, so parameterized by omega, quadratic differentials omega. This family, we'll see later on, that when considering an appropriate moduli space of Higgs bundles for some groups, this becomes a component, and this is what's known as the Hitching component for rank two. So we'll come back to this example, because it gives a lot of information. Later on in 92, Hitching, for instance, when studying Hitching components, um, he showed that it parameterized Techmuller space uh, inside the moduli space of Higgs bundles. <laughs> So I want to try and use the same conditions that we had for stability uh, for vector bundles to try and construct the moduli space of Higgs bundles. Here we've added a condition, we've added the, the Higgs field, and so we should put some condition of stability which involves the Higgs field. And the more structure we add to a Higgs bundle, the more we have to add to the stability condition. So the stability condition to build, to build the moduli space we need stability conditions, we need stability and we're going to define it following this definition here but only asking for the, the condition for bundles that are preserved by the Higgs field. So not everyone matters for us now. We have a Higgs field, so it should only matter for those that are preserved. So we say, we say a sub-bundle F inside E is preserved by phi is preserved by phi, or equivalently we say that it's phi invariant if what you expect happens. So if when applied to the, the sub-bundle, we come back to it, tensor with f. So it's inside, the image is inside f tensored with k. Those are all going to be phi invariant, and now we can do the stability con definition. So we say that a Higgs bundle is stable. We say E phi is stable or semi-stable, just like we did there, if for every sub-bundle F, inside E, so which is phi invariant, so which is phi invariant, we have, so we have mu of F is less or less or equal for semi-stable than mu of E. So it's exactly the same condition, but we relax the number of uh, vector bundles we're going to use. We're not going to use every vector bundle, we're only going to look at those that are preserved. So for instance, what happens if you, your Higgs field doesn't preserve anyone? Then you're stable, automatically stable. And when you're trying to look at preserved bundles, remember the Higgs field is a matrix, really, point-wise is a matrix. And it has, um, it has a structure, and when you're trying to see which bundles are preserved or if anyone can be preserved, you can look at the matrix and see would it be preserving any of the sub-bundles that you have. So we can come back to this example 
let me just erase. Uh, erase in this case, we, we know that this is the quadratic differential. So we had omega uh, quadratic differential. And you can ask, is there any bundle that is preserved? So from this matrix, can I come back, if I apply this Higgs field to any sub-bundle, in particular to k to half and k to minus a half, can I be preserved? So for omega different than zero, for our differential form different than zero, no one is preserved. So because it's mixing them, the two bundles together. So no sub-bundle preserved. So it's automatically stable. There's no one to check. But when omega is zero, who is preserved? Well, k to the minus a half. Because it was sending me k to the minus a half to k to a half to k, and that's going to be inside the image. So k to the minus a half is preserved. But when we look at what is the degree and the slope of this, so what is the slope of k to the minus a half? Mu of k to the minus a half is the degree over the rank. The degree we said for k is 2g minus 2. So for k to the half is g minus 1, but with negative. So it's minus g plus 1, minus g plus 1, and the rank is 1. It's a line bundle. So the slope for this one is, minus, is negative, because g is at least 2. So this is negative. And what is the slope for our big Higgs field, so for our original pair, E phi? The degree of this bundle is a rank two bundle who is the sum of a line bundle and its dual. So the degree is zero, it cancels out. So this is always less than zero, which is the slope of E. Hence, our family of, this is of, rank two stable Higgs bundles. It's not just Higgs bundles, it's stable Higgs bundles that we're looking at here. The same that we were talking about vector bundles when the rank and the degree are co-prime, once we form the moduli space, it'll be uh, smooth when they are co-prime. But there's one stability more that I want to tell you just in case it appears when looking at parabolic Higgs bundles, which is polystability. So we say that it's polystable if we can uh, write it as a sum of Higgs bundles which have the same slope as E. So if we can write E phi as a sum of, say, F1 phi 1 plus dot 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 plus Fk phi k. So these are smaller Higgs bundles such that the slope of fi is equal to the slope of e. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, eraser. OK, so we want to look at this model I space. Now that we have the stability conditions, we're going to call it M. So we're going to look at M. And so if the rank, I'm going to be switching between rank. I'm going to put N for rank. Sorry, people. No, let's just do it before. And D, uh, the moduli space, moduli space of isomorphism classes of semi-stable Higgs bundles of fixed rank and degree. So we want to fix both things, uh, the rank and the degree, just like we did before. Uh, so this moduli space 
now we are not constructing it really, I'm telling you it can be constructed under these stability conditions. You can look at hypercalar quotients to construct it uh, from these pairs. And you can also consider the appearance through Hitchin's equations, so self-duality equations on Riemann surfaces. And what Hitchin was able to show is that the existence of a solution corresponded to having uh, this, uh, this moduli space, so a point in this moduli space. I want to say a few properties that this moduli space has, and then we're going to come back to the example. Uh, one of the properties that it has, and that is remark, that is very useful, we are not going to use it very much, but many authors in the area actually use this action, so I want to make sure that you know that it exists. So if we have a, if we have a stable Higgs bundle, so if, if I, is stable, then if I multiply by a non-zero uh, complex number, the Higgs field, then I remain stable. So, so then E lambda phi for lambda and non-zero complex number is stable. I can also look at an, um, an automorphism of E and pull the Higgs field backward, and that's also stable. So E, and then let's call it alpha, pull back of phi is, uh, so four alpha automorphism of E is stable. Um, so it has to be holomorphic. Remember, we're looking at holomorphic bundles, so holomorphic. And this is what's known as the sister action of the moduli space. So sister action of M. Um, so when once we fix rank and degree, we just call it M. This uh, moduli space has a few properties that are going to be useful. It's a quasi-projective scheme. And we have said it's smooth when rank and degree are called prime. And also it has a hypercalar structure that we're going to come back, so we're not going to talk much today, but it has a lot of geometry appearing. So let me just keep the Riemann surface since that's the one thing that we have fixed for now. And let me tell you a bit more about other uh, Higgs bundles that we can define. Are there any questions? These are just the definitions. You have to forgive me that I have to go through the definitions at the beginning, uh, but it's going to be get interesting once we start looking at the geometry. And I want to uh, give you a few. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's for the whole model space. So people will look at um, semi. Yeah isomorphism classes of semi-stable bundles and it'll have a sister action. Um, and this sister action will allow you to look at things like Morse theory for uh, the model space. Uh, yes, please. Um, yes, it should still be there. So whenever I talk about Higgs bundle, you should be considering traceless. Um, oh, that was in the yes, it was in the... Uh, no, actually, it wasn't in the definition, so that's true. I didn't... I, I told you when I constructing it from vector bundles, we use traceless. I'll show you how it appears at traceless condition. So for the definition, we don't need it to be traceless. And what we're actually getting is what we call GLNC, so general linear group Higgs bundles. Once we start putting other groups, we'll come back. That's a great point. So let's do that. Um, let's take a look at some generalizations of Higgs bundles. And I want to before, let's do one generalization. And before we go into more, let me try to uh, convince you that it's an interesting subject. So let me uh, do that, and then I'll give you a map of interesting questions that we'll be touching during the other lectures, just to make sure I keep you uh, interested. Um, so the same way that you can generalize a vector bundle to, uh, to a principal bundle by asking for the fibers to have the structure group of a complex Lie group, for instance, we can do the same for Higgs bundles. So we can put a structure of Lie groups. So let me put GC, a complex Lie group. 
You might want to put some extra conditions to this, but uh, later on we'll see that we can define them for almost every uh, or all of uh, complex Lie groups. So let me just put GC a complex Lie group, and let's try to define what Higgs bundles are for a complex Lie group. Um, so we'll come back to the to the space. So definition. We're going to do the same that we do for vector bundles, but for Higgs bundles in terms of principle GC bundles. So uh, GC, a GC Higgs bundle P phi is a pair for which, uh, so is formed of P, a principle, a principle GC bundle, and phi, a holomorphic section of that joint bundle to P tensor with K. So phi, a holomorphic section of add P answered with k. So we're using the joint representation of p, of p to do that. You could, uh, and we're going to take that as the definition for principal Higgs bundles, but you could use other representations. This definition comes also from 87, from Hitchin's second paper where he was looking at different groups. And the most interesting part from our perspective in this week is that even though this might seem a bit too theoretic because now we're getting into uh, principal bundles, for classical, uh, so remark, for groups GC, which are GL, or groups of type A, B, C, D, so for SL, for SP, and for SO of any rank, this definition can be put in terms of our old definition of vector bundles. So a GC Higgs bundle. can be expressed as a pair, pair E phi as before, plus conditions reflecting the nature of the group. The nature of the group. What do we mean by this? Let's put an example here. If you take SL, and then we'll get to uh, your question about the trace. So for example, example, if we take GC to be SL and C, then we have then an SL and C Higgs bundle 